every video that I upload to this channel is a lesson for me. And it all begins with writing and thinking and making. Starting in 2003, I began publishing posts on my blog. It was uh, an uneven affair, let's say. There were stretches in which I would write every day, but other times I'd just leave it, and I'd leave it fallow for months. And then I would resurface with a long, apologetic post. I'm sorry, I'm back. Some of those essays were pretty good, um, but others were careless or self-promoting or glib. But finally, after almost 20 years, I decided to abandon my blog altogether. And about four years ago, almost to the day, I started writing again, and this time in the form of weekly email essays. And over the last 48 months, I've managed to never skip a week. And writing these essays has been rich and valuable, a wonderful project that's, that's taught me all kinds of valuable lessons. And a lot of them I've applied to the videos that I make for this channel. In fact, a lot of them originated in the, these video scripts originated in my essays. And so I'd like to share some of these lessons that I've learned with you in the hope that, that they might provide useful to you if you ever want to embark on some kind of extended project. And, uh, and even if you don't, I think that they can guide the sorts of creative projects that we all do or want to do. Okay, here they are in no particular order. First of all, keep a notebook or a digital file on your phone and write down all of the stuff that you observe and that you think and that you read and that you just come across in YouTube videos, wherever it is, it's all gonna be fodder for your creations, for your imagination. And the same goes for the interesting stuff that you see and that you listen to on podcasts and that you, just anything that you come across, put it down and keep it there. One day you'll be glad that you did. Another one is to set a deadline. For me, having to do these essays every week, having to make videos for this channel, because I set a deadline, it happens. If I didn't set myself this goal, this obligation really, I'd be sporadic and I would spend more time making excuses than making essays and making videos. But knowing, uh-oh, it's Tuesday, I've got to get something done. Uh-oh, it's Friday, I've got to send out another essay. Because I know that that's the rule that I set for myself. I don't argue about it. I know that if I don't do it, I'll feel kind of crappy. Maybe I'm not going to get fired. I'm not going to get big trouble. But I'll just feel somehow less good about me. Um, so I just kind of just keep doing it without thinking too much about it. So having that deadline has been really crucial. I write every Monday, I write my Tuesday essay, and I write most of my Friday essay that time too. By Thursday, it's all done and it's ready to go. Um, another thought is start anywhere. The first sentence that I write is important only because it initiates the process, it starts things going. And it's probably gonna be replaced before I send it out. Um, a lot of the stuff that I say in these videos, it kind of <laughs> comes and goes. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's scripted, sometimes it's off the cuff. I don't really know, but I know that just starting, even if I meander for a while, eventually I will get somewhere. I'll get somewhere good. So it's important to get something, anything down on the page or into the camera. It's just a spark to crank the engine. If you don't take the first step, you're not going anywhere. And so even if that first step, you stumble, you trip, it doesn't matter, it's behind you, keep going. But start somewhere. Don't think too much about what it's gonna be like. Just say, I gotta go, gotta do it. Gotta sit down, you know, and uh, just begin the process. Another thing is develop a system. By eliminating too many ways of working, I can focus on my writing. Um, I use Notion to collect my thoughts. I use Scrivener to write and organize my pieces. I use ConvertKit to send out my newsletters. I use YouTube to share my videos. That's it. I always start my um, 
essays by saying, hi, and I conclude them by saying, your pal, Danny, beginning and end. Uh, I try to write a little postscript in my essays that's kind of light and whimsical. No matter what the main essay is about, I try to put in a couple of jokes at the end of my essays. If you read my essays, you'll know those PSs. If you don't, well, you can sign up right now at dannysessays.com. It's free, and you'll find out what I'm talking about on Friday. Um, another thing I've learned is be authentic. If I don't write for me, and I don't write in my own voice, there's not really any point in doing all this. If it's real for me, then it stands a better chance of meaning something to you. There's so much advice that people give you about how to do this stuff. There's a gazillion channels here on YouTube that will tell you the best way to make videos. I've looked at a lot of that stuff, but in the end I figured out, you know what? Me sitting here talking to you in the way that I do, that's the best I can do. And I'm going to adhere to that rather than trying to put on somebody else's framework. So being authentic is really important. Be willing to fail. You know, I write a lot of essays. I make a lot of videos that reveal my ineptitudes or my fears, my inabilities, my disappointments, my dashed hopes. Um, but by admitting my shortcomings, I hope to help both of us get better, get stronger, get smarter, come up with new ways of doing things. My job isn't to be better than you. It isn't to be an expert. It's to be somebody who is trying stuff. And these videos are me trying. My essays are me trying. And I would rather the try and screw it up than not to have tried at all. Sounds trite, but it's true. Um, another thing is find an audience. Having somebody to aim your creative output at helps to keep it focused, helps to keep it consistent. I have a sense in my mind of you. It may not be anything like you, but I have a version of you that I keep in my heart and my brain. And when I sit down to make a video, I think, what would you like? What do you need to hear? How are you going to respond to this? How can I help you? And so I don't want to let you down. That's an important thing. If you have an audience in mind, Try not to let that audience down by not showing up, by not doing good work, by not being consistent, by not trying. So I want you to benefit from what I'm doing. And so that's why I got to think about you as well. And I have to know you as an audience. And honestly, as the audience for this channel grows, it's wonderful and gratifying. But in the end, I still think of me talking to you one to one. And that's really important. Uh, another thing is invite feedback. doesn't matter if it's good or bad or indifferent. It makes the process exciting and rewarding in a way. Feedback also helps me to grow. So when you leave comments on my videos or if you write back to me when you get one of my essays, I read it. I care that you did it. I write for me first, but I write for you second. And knowing what you like and what you relate to is useful for me to make better work, better for both of us. I can't always respond to every single comment or to every single email I get, but I read and I think about every single one of them. And if it has a question in it, I'll do my damnedest to try to respond. Extrapolate. That's another one. Assume that if it's true or true for me or interesting to me, it's going to be relevant for somebody else out there. Maybe everything I say doesn't resonate with you. There are some people who, who nothing I say resonates with them. Oh, well, better luck next time. I'll keep trying. But that's not a reason to not try. So generally, by starting with, hmm, what do I think? What's going on with me? I think I'll be able to help you too. Um, Build a backlog, a backlog of content, as it were, content. I'm not sure how I feel about that word, but anyway, I don't always write down to the deadline. I don't always make these videos five minutes before I upload them. Sometimes I'll make them in advance. 
you know, or sometimes I'll write a few extra ideas or I'll have worked out an idea to some extent, perhaps weeks in advance. And then when I sit down to write, I'll have a lot of it fleshed out. Or if I sit down and go, oh, I uh, suddenly got invited to a dinner party. I can't send out my essay. I have one standing by. If I have a few extra pieces on the back burner, I can handle busy times and I can still stay consistent and maintain this obligation that I gave myself. Um, <clears throat> another thing is consistency over perfection. Some of my essays, some of my videos are great. Lots of people love them. Some of them suck. But by focusing on a long-term relationship with you, instead of having to just blow you away every week, I actually managed to get it done and to keep the quality up. So I'm going to assume that it isn't, everything doesn't count on this thing. And that helps me to, to be less perfectionist, right? To keep that monkey in my head under control by saying, you know what? It'll be worse to not make a video. It'll be worse to not send out an essay. It'll be more disappointing than if I send a second rate one. That isn't to say I ever am satisfied with doing a second rate one, but I would rather do that and show up than self-flagellate because it isn't exactly the most perfect, brilliant thing ever. I'd love to hit home runs every single time I step up to bat. But I don't think anybody does that. And again, the most important thing is to be consistent rather than being absolutely perfect. Um, one at a time. I don't have to think too big when I'm on this journey that's been going on for 20-something years, right? I never sat down and said, oh, in 25 years, I want to be on YouTube. 25 years ago, there wasn't YouTube when I first started doing this. So I think of what I do now. I don't know where it's going to be, where it's going to go. I just know that I have to make this video today. And I'm going to have to make another one next week, and I'm going to write another essay. I just know that I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this first step, and then I'm going to take another one. Then I'll take another one. We'll see where we go. I don't know. I don't know, but if I think too much about the big scale of it all, it's impossible. Nobody can deal with that. And so I don't. I just try and show up. All right. I hope that this helps you. Whatever it is, whatever your field that you're in, whatever goals you have, I promise you that being consistent, having a specific audience, those kinds of things will help you to focus and to grow what you want to do. No matter what it is, making that effort and thinking about other people who want what you're doing and doing your best for them, that's all that matters. You know, Steve Jobs, who's always been one of my heroes, he said, allegedly, real artists ship. In other words, sitting around having a lot of big plans and big ideas ain't going to cut it. You got to just make something and get it out there. So start your own YouTube channel. Make your own videos, make them on your phone, make them crappy. Most people who start YouTube channels do start with making crappy ones, including me. Go back and look at some of my earlier ones, whatever, or don't. Um, but the, the thing is, what matters is starting and thinking, who can I help? What can I do for them? And how can I keep showing up and keep helping them? Because the world always needs help. So I look forward to seeing what you do, and uh, I hope that you find some of this advice helpful, all right? Get out there, do something, make something, and enjoy yourself. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.